Arriving as the fifth playable Archon in Genshin Impact, Farina represents the Hydra element, unanimously considered far and away the strongest and most ubiquitous among the seven even before the advent of Fontaine, the land of Hydra. Boasting an incredibly stacked roster of characters, with several of them being meta-defining, as the Elder Stateswoman of Arcadra, she is quite the standard to reach. Personally, I'm not of the school of thought that Archons have to be the strongest or most powerful character of their respective element. Rather, they should aim to encapsulate the fundamental aspects of said element. They should embody what the element is meant to be in Genshin Impact. Farina doesn't just pull that off though, she genuinely may be the strongest character of the strongest element. I know it may come off a bit premature or presumptuous to make a Why Everyone Plays video the literal day of a character's release, but I speak with utmost confidence that alongside her gratuitous widespread appeal being an Archon, Farina pushes the needle of Genshin's power scaling to new heights, and her inclusion can and will have a huge influence on so much of the existing lineup of teams, if not now then later on in the not so distant future. So without further ado, we're going to be talking about why everyone will play Farina. While they aren't necessarily required to be the best character of their respective elements, there's a high likelihood for them to at least be in the upper echelon. Even the weakest Archon Venti has a legendary reputation for being the answer to crowd control. Zhongli, Shogun, and Nahida are also some of if not the most sought after units for their elemental affinity as well, with Nahida being definitively the best Dendro character, likely until the end of time. Historically, the Archons have gotten stronger and stronger with each passing version. Much of that has to do with the underlying expectations imposed by the community. Seeing as how these characters represent their elements and by extension represent the entirety of Genshin's mythos, on which they're heavily invested in, if not the keystone of it all, they're expectedly some of the most popular characters in the game. Ever since the fiasco with Zhongli over three years ago, it's essentially become obligatory for the Archons to have power befitting their status. Reception on Farina as a character is kind of split in the middle, with one side adoring her refreshingly off-the-cuff personality and the other being justifiably annoyed that she behaves like a spoiled pretentious brat whose dad's a lawyer, or in this case a judge. I mean, come on, Novelette may as well be Farina's surrogate father without the two act towards each other. I digress. Whether you love her or find her insufferable, Farina, just like the four Archons that came before her, attributes much of her widespread appeal to her station as an Archon. She's constantly shoved in your face throughout the storyline in the same way Venti, Zhongli, Shogun, and Nahida were before, and with that much attention naturally comes with the player's desire to obtain and use a character. This desire is further compounded by the nature of Hydro in totality. As mentioned earlier, Hydro has quickly become the most integral element in the game. Involved in virtually every team composition outside of a niche few, it's also known for sporting the highest number of tier 0 units, characters that define the current meta. While each element has one or at most two up in top tiers such as Animal having Kasaha, Dendro having Nahida and Alhaitham, Pyro having Shangling and Bennett, Hydro has four, Nuvalet, Yelan, Xingqiu and Nilo, potentially five with Kokomi. While exceptional in their own right, a contributing factor to their popularity stems from how necessary they are relative to other units, which can be credited to how all-encompassing Hydro is in this game. This sets an extremely high bar for Farina, one that has led many to actually believe she might be the first disappointment as there's already such an established gold standard for the element that even the Hydro Archon may not be able to live up to, at least not without egregiously power creeping the game. Well, it appears that Farina's prima donna attitude is reflected by her gameplay because she did exactly that. To say that she pushes the boundaries of acceptable balance in Genshin would be the understatement of the year. Pardon me for abandoning composure for a moment, but let me make something perfectly clear. Farina is fucking bullshit. And I mean that in the most complimentary way possible. It's almost ridiculous how ridiculous her moveset is, to the point where I would argue she unironically power creeps the entire game. There was a lot of preliminary discussion over if she'll struggle to find a niche, while with Kokomi, Xingqiu, and Yelan covering almost every aspect of Hydro possible. But the benefit of Hydro, that's almost exclusive to Hydro, is that it's the only element that not only allows for, but actually incentivizes collaboration, as demonstrated by discourse over whether Yelan supersedes her 4-star competition, only to find out that her best duel partner is her 4-star competition. Farina's another repeat of that situation, but taken to levels I was not expecting. Let's start by going over what she does. Her elemental skill Salon Solitaire has two functions, but we'll mostly be looking at the Osea version since that's effectively the only one you'll care about. Farina summons three companions that behave almost identically to Shangling's Guoba or Official's Oz, attacking nearby enemies at intervals while prioritizing the one you're actively hitting, with each one dealing damage equal to a portion of Farina's max health. Seeing as how Hydro is all about using health as damage, while with characters like Kokomi, Yelan, Nivellet, and Nilu scaling off health, it only makes sense for Farina to do the same. Additionally, she continues the trend of Archons being very consistent, as her elemental skill has overflow up time, that is, a duration of 30 seconds but a cooldown of only 20, allowing you to have her salon members active indefinitely. Moreover, whenever any of the members attack, they will drain a portion of your party's HP to increase their damage in proportion to the number of party members with 50% current health or more. So if all four of your party members have 50% health or more, Farina's companions can deal up to 40% more damage with each attack, making her yet another character who sacrifices health to fight in battle. 
Salon Solitaire sets the precedent for freeing this entire kit, not just in terms of the aspects we talk about, but in terms of the strength of it. I'm not much of a spreadsheet person, which is why I don't see myself as a theory crafter, but we must go over the numbers for a moment. Though they fluctuate, notice the HP scaling of these attacks. For reference, we can compare them to Yelan's Death Clearing Dice. At rank 10, Yelan averages 8.77 times 3 for a total of 26.31% of her max health in damage per volley. At rank 10, Farina Salon members deal fluctuating damage, with the Seahorse doing the least, the Octopus in the middle, and the Crab doing the most. Altogether, that totals just over 31%. But since they fire at their own pace, the Seahorse attacks the fastest, while the Crab attacks slowest. Overall though, Yelan attacks faster, but Farina does more damage. The reason I'm making such a big deal out of this is because Yelan is known for damage. She has fantastic Hydro application as well, albeit not as much as Xingzhou at base, but she's more known for her incredible off-field damage. By the way, I'm not using this Dunder Man Yelan, she's still a fantastic unit. I'm just using her as a reference. Point being, Farina's elemental skill, not her burst, her skill, does comparable DPS to Yelan's elemental burst, all while having overflow uptime, no energy cost as it's an elemental skill, and it has no activation condition. I mean, you do have to attack something to focus targeting, but this is insane. Farina's elemental skill does this much damage and has this much uptime. Her skill's basically the damage part of Xingqiu's rain swords and Yelan's dice, but attached to a summon system, which honestly makes it better since they will attack even while you're swapping through characters or going through skill at burst animations. It's more consistent. In terms of off-field hydro application, she's better than Kokomi, a bit worse than Yelan, and measurably worse than Xingqiu. That being said, with damage like that, she doesn't need to have the best hydro app when she just kills everything, far exceeding the damage of Xingqiu's rain swords, and it's not even close. Unheard Confession also increases the damage of her salon members based on her max health in a very similar fashion to Nilu. For every 1000 points of max HP, she increases the damage of her salon members by 0.7%. It also makes the Numa aspect of her skill heal faster, but once again, why would you ever use that compared to the Osea version? This bonus can cap out at 28%, so you'll need at least 40k HP on Farina for max damage, and since you are going to be stacking health on her anyways, this lines up perfectly. At this point, Farina's damage is a lot stronger than Yelan at base. Obviously, Yelan's dice gets stronger with more investment, but to reiterate, this is only Farina's skill, not burst. Speaking of burst though, let's talk about it. Let the people rejoice, and you best believe that lives up to its name. Farina creates a large area that deals massive hydro damage to nearby enemies, and for the next 18 seconds, whenever her party's health increases or decreases, a stack of fanfare will be generated up to a cap of 300. For every stack of fanfare accumulated, she gives bonus total damage and increased healing to her entire party. Not the active character, the entire party. So you basically don't have to worry about snapshotting. She persistently grants these bonuses to all four members. How much bonus you ask? At rank 10, one stack of fanfare converts to 0.25% more damage with 300 stacks divided by 4, that's a maximum of 75%. 75%! And let me repeat myself because I can't stress this enough. To the entire party. And this is total damage, not elemental damage, not attack, unconditional total damage. That's fucking broken! What makes Yelan so good aside from her own damage output is that she increases the total damage of the active character by up to 50%, averaging at around 30% for the full duration. At max fanfare stacks, Farina gives more than double that amount spread all throughout the entire party. Now of course, she also has a stack of fanfare, so you're realistically not getting the full 75% for more than, I would say, half the duration. But even so, we're staring down an average of 50% bonus damage for 18 seconds. That's insane! Assuming your entire party is at max health before she uses her ultimate, her elemental skill will actively drain your total health. Meanwhile, you're also likely taking damage from enemy attacks, which can expedite the process further. If you have a healer, which you'll need, and I'll touch on that a bit later, you can expect to cap off Rina's burst within 5 or 6 seconds. But don't quote me on that. In any case, to achieve 300 stacks of fanfare, you need to accumulate a combined total of 300% max health worth of damage and healing, which may seem difficult, but again, with proper setup beforehand, it's very lenient for how staggering her bonus is. And let's not forget, you also do get 30% healing bonus on the side. She can also make the stacking more easy with endless waltz. Whenever the active character is healed by someone other than her and the healing overflows, she will give a small amount of healing for another party member to the tune of 2% every 2 seconds. So basically you get 2 stacks of fanfare every 2 seconds. I mean hey, whatever gets you to that cap faster works just as well. Numbers like these are just impeccable. If it were just the active character, that would have been comparatively mild, but she gives that much damage bonus to the entire damn team, whether they're on or off field. Considering one of Kasa's greatest strengths is that his elemental damage increase applies to the entire party, that puts things into perspective just how powerful Farina's burst is, and like her skill, it has 100% uptime with a duration of 18 seconds, but a cooldown of 15. Technically, recasting the burst means you have to restack fanfare, and unless you have Jean, getting a team back to full health fast so you can stack fanfare quickly again is a noticeable weakness for Farina, she's very frontloaded. Even so, 75%. 75% 75% and that's just that base. Let's look at her constellations for a brief moment. 
Constellation 1 automatically grants you 150 fanfare stacks on cast, giving you 37.5% bonus damage right from the start, but it also raises the cap from 300 to 400, allowing you to achieve a max damage bonus of 100%. You thought 75 was crazy, now we're at 100, and it gets even better. At C2, the rate at which you accumulate fanfare stacks is multiplied by 250% or 3.5 times, which means the total amount of max health you need to cap out a damage bonus goes down from 250 to like 70. In other words, you get the 100% damage bonus pretty much instantaneously. In addition, extra fanfare stacks will carry over to increase her max health, and she can get up to 2.4 times that amount, so if you go hyper HP on Farina, she can most likely break above 100,000 health, which at that point gives her some of the best off-field damage mankind has ever had the privilege of experiencing. And for you rich boys out there, Constellation 3 increases her ultimate rank to level 13. Do you want to know how much damage you get now? 124% unconditional total damage across your entire party. Let that sink in. 124%. Permanent uptime, and with C2 getting 400 stacks of fanfare takes half a second. 124%. That's four times Yelan's average damage boost. At 1200 elemental mastery C2 Katsuha, he gets 48% elemental damage bonus and only for the elements he swirls. Farina gives almost three times that amount unconditionally. Yelan's damage boost averages out at around 30-33% to over the duration of death clearing dice to only the active character even at C3. Farina gives 124%. Power creep, ladies and gentlemen. Farina is easily going to be one of the most widely used characters in the game. Disregarding numbers for a moment, she has incredibly persistent off-field damage through elemental skill and being Hydro is serviceable application that automatically puts her in rotation with Kokomi Shinchon Yelan for Hydro-based teams. If not for the application, then just for her own damage output as I've gone over. On top of that, she can give your team a substantial, a ludicrous boost in DPS under the sole condition that you bring a healer, which I mean you were going to do anyway since 90% of teams need a healer. These universally applicable functions can apply to so many teams, especially since the damage boost is total damage and under a very universal metric of health going up or down. This can allow her to fit into virtually any team composition that doesn't have all four party slots delegated to a specific purpose. I mean heck, she fundamentally changes the dynamic of team building as we know it. Farina is so broken that you can basically run her plus Jean and they will solo carry any party. Jean's instant full party heal pairs famously with Farina's party wide HP drain so her inclusion makes getting Jean off banner an actual good thing. Speaking of which, that's the last part I want to go over before we end off the video. Since Farina has such all-purpose usability, she single-handedly changes a lot of teams. For instance, thanks to her, Hu Tao is, once again, the strongest on-field damage dealer. It's almost like Hu Tao wants Hydro to get better, not Pyro to get better. The strongest double Hydro team is now Hu Tao, Yelan, Farina, and Jin. Even though one would think any semblance of healing is a bad thing on Hu Tao, the damage increase in off-field DPS of Farina and Yelan compared to Xingqiu and Yelan is just so much better that you can effectively disregard Hu Tao's Pyro damage bonus from being low health, since you get more from Farina. Moreover, with Jean instead of Zhongli, this team now has access to VV Shred, although getting Swirl on Jean's a bitch and have to do, but the potential is there. Plus, this means Hu Tao can actually go an Elemental Mastery weapon for Giga Chat numbers. But of course, if there's one character who Farina was practically made for, it's Nivellet. Nivellet, Farina, Jean, and Fischl is arguably the strongest team in the game if we go by ease of access. If you have Nivellet, please, please just get Farina, you'll thank me later. She also makes Mono Hydro competitively viable, which I'd never imagined would be the next Mono Element team. Kokomi is your main DPS, Xingqiu, Yelan, and Farina. This team straight up wins through sheer force of Hydro damage. So, believe it or not, Farina is bringing us back to Unga Bunga. She gives so much damage that she alone makes brute force damage a viable strategy again. Now that's not to say she doesn't help elemental reaction teams. What part of unconditional total damage do you not understand? All hate them can use Farina, Freeze can use Farina, Taser can use Farina, Hyper Bloom can use Farina, National teams can use Farina for all the difference it makes, Eula can use Farina, Mono Geo teams can use Farina, every team can conceivably use Farina. I'm being deadass by the way, the best Mono Geo team for Ito is now Ito, Farina, Jean, Yelan. Yes. I'm pretty sure the best physical team right now is Yula, Farina, Diana, Shogun. Farina's off-field damage combined with her immense buffing capability allows you to say why the hell not and throw her into any team composition you can think of, and she will at worst be good. Okay, I'm exaggerating. She's not a silver bullet for every team, but she sure as hell comes close. The main issue right now at the present moment is that Jean's the only healer who can insta-heal the entire party to full health. We do have Kokomi and Chichi who can also full party heal, but it's not fast enough, it's incremental. So Farina's main weakness is that she's not fully optimized at C0 yet. At C2 you're fine, you can get away with healing one person and that person caps out fanfare in half a second. But at C0, if you don't have Jean, healing your party fast can be a challenge, particularly if you need to refresh your burst. But I mean, 
That only underscores how broken she is. She's this good before we even get optimal synergy for her. If there's a full party healer who's better than Jean, Verena is the best character in the game, like definitively the best character in Genshin Impact. At C2, 1000% the best character in the game. C2 Verena is probably stronger than any other C2 5 star if we assess the total value of each unit. This character changes Genshin Impact. Farina allows any DPS character to run Marshall Se. There is no other character who allows other units to run an entirely different artifact set. It's ridiculous how overpowered she is. She does crazy damage on her own and gives crazy damage to everyone else on the team. Slap on a golden troop set and festering desire on her and you're basically set for life. I have not seen a unit this offensively powerful since... Nahida. But I mean, she is the god of the most powerful element in the game. Alrighty, so that's gonna be it for today. Moral of the story, get Farina. If you have money to spare, get C2 Farina, or even C3. She will carry. She's the future. The strongest potential unit in the game is a spoiled teenage brat with separation anxiety. We have begun our descent into the anime degenerate rabbit hole, my friends. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsferum, join my Discord server, and check out my video on Genshin Impact's future meta if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.